Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Hartville, located in Wright County, Missouri, on January 9th to the 11th. 1863. As a clarification, this is detailing the Battle of Hartville, not to be confused with the Battle of Hartsville in December of 1862 in Tennessee. In early January 1863, Confederate Brigadier General John S. Marmaduke commanded the 4th Division, 1st Corps, a group of battle-hardened veterans who had fought some of the worst fighting west of the Mississippi River. Marmaduke's goal was a raid into the Union Supply Depot in Springfield, Missouri from his position in Arkansas. He planned on doing this by using a two-pronged attack led by himself with the other prong led by Colonel Joseph C. Porter. The goal was to assault Union positions around Hartville, Missouri. On January 9th, a detachment of Marmaduke's cavalry was able to successfully take a small militia garrison outside of the town. During this time, Porter moved on Marshfield, and on January 10th, he was able to take some additional garrison troops stationed there. Flush with victory, Porter connected with Marmaduke just east of Marshfield. In an effort to rebuff the Confederate raid, Union Colonel Samuel Merrill, stationed in Houston, Missouri, led a force of 700 inexperienced Union troops to try and kick Marmaduke out of the area. He was disappointed to find out that garrison troops had already surrendered to the Confederate troops, so Merrill moved on to Woods Fork of the Gasconade River. When he arrived, he found a group of picnickers and forced the civilians to leave. There, they prepared to engage with Marmaduke with renewed vigor. On January 11th, he met with Marmaduke and his raiders seven miles west of Hartville. The fighting began to rage and Marmaduke realized he was out of position and Merrill was swinging around to cut Marmaduke off from his route to return to Arkansas. Renewing his counterattack, Marmaduke was able to push Merrill back into Hartville where Merrill secured defensive positions on the high ground west of the courthouse. Marmaduke attacked Merrill's positions, and the battle lasted more than four hours that ravaged the town. Both armies ended up pulling back and retreating. Marmaduke claims were a Pyrrhic victory, though. He was able to push Merrill away from Hartville, but his troops had been so injured that Marmaduke had to concede the raid and return to Arkansas with the rest of his men. Meanwhile, Merrill claimed victory even though he had to retreat from the field of battle. Since Marmaduke was unable to continue the raid, that was his consideration for success. The one unfortunate part is that almost a third of Merrill's men, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Dunlap, never received orders to withdraw and remained on the battlefield until they found themselves alone that evening. History views both sides as losing, though. The raid was successful in disrupting the Union troops and smaller militia outposts had been over and destroyed. However, Marmaduke was unable to secure his primary objective, the raiding of the Union Supply Depot at Springfield. Union losses overall were 78 men, including 7 killed, 64 wounded, and 7 missing or captured. This did not include the militia personnel who were not listed in the roles of the Union Army. The Confederates lost a bit more with a total of 111 men. This included 12 killed, 96 wounded, and 3 missing or captured. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.